Hi, how are you? I'm good, and you? I'm all right. You were even already yeah. going live. <laughs> yeah, I just thought <laughs> we just start so that um, I, I, I thought I would start before you join okay. me, but I think it's okay. Karibu, Karibu, we can just be taking time to share. The, the live. Welcome everyone um, to today's live. Hope my lighting is fine. Uh, we are having an amazing guest on the show today, and I'm so excited to. This is the first time we've invited her to. <laughs> I think her, yeah, her first time. Oh wow! We actually just. Yeah, it's your first time. Um, and so I'm so excited, I'm so excited. So if you're joining us, please share this link. Um, share this link on your Facebook page, share this link on your WhatsApp page. Uh, the, this page. the live show is on our page, She Is Wired. She Is Wired, so please share this on your, on, you know, women need to hear this, uh, but it's open also for men, women and men as well going to have an interesting discussion about leadership, about women and leadership and, co and collaboration. Um, it's so interesting, just before I came on, the electricity went off. <laughs> and so so I, was the thing, and I was told the electricity disappeared and I thought, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> hey. Gosh, I was just like praying the entire time. So they just actually came back. Okay, so I'm, I'm just so excited, I'm praying that yeah, that the gadgets are able to keep up with. But yeah, so Karibu Sana, welcome. How is it? I know you're joining us from the diaspora. <laughs> I am. Sometimes I get shocked when people say diaspora. I thought, oh my God, this is diaspora. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. That's, that's <laughs> it is right. Sorry. Um, how is it going? It's very good. So let me just be a diaspora person. We talk about the weather a lot. And so every yes. conversation starts with weather. Um, and it's because we live in a land which has extreme issues of weather, if you ask me. So I'm in New York and we're just stepping away from winter. The African in me is excited mm -hmm. because me, yeah, like wow. sun. He's born a sun child and I like <laughs> <laughs> sun. So we are headed towards spring. Today it's a bit dull. Yesterday was beautiful. I was literally all afternoon and decided just to go around and take it in the city. I, it's a beautiful city. I enjoy it. I enjoy it more than I thought I would. Um, but yeah, diaspora is good. Tell us, you can tell us the city you're in so that everyone okay. can know that this is the, hmm. I'm in New York. Um, uh, yes, I'm in New York, in a place called Manhattan, in the middle of New York. Um, I've been here for the last, when did I come here? I came in in August. I've been here for the last six months, and I'll be here till wow. September of this year. I'm going through an interesting fellowship program. So it's called an African Women in Public Service uh, Fellowship Program, and it's funded by Oprah. So Oprah picks one woman every year, and they take them through this fellowship program, executive program, or whatever the case may be, that works with women who are interested in public service. And I was blessed to have been selected in 2020. I couldn't come in because of COVID, and so I ended up coming in. Yeah. Wow. Eish, yeah. That's amazing. Uh, the Lord know, does amazing when, things. It's the Lord's business. <laughs> no, it is. It is. It's, it's the God's grace. It's God's grace. And he has a reason why he's, yeah, he's giving those opportunities for you. And I'm so excited to have you on board and even accepting our invite. Uh, for the ones who are watching, uh, please share this live. We want to kick off um, right now because I know that uh, Esther is, you know, just with us for about 40 minutes. Yeah, is it 40 or less? Actually, it's now even less. <laughs> less than yeah. this morning has had so much going on, and I have another meeting, unfortunately, so I'll have to step out at some point. But yeah, 40 minutes. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. So, so we can start with prayer and then we can just get into the questions. Yes. Yeah. Father, we thank you for the opportunity for sharing 
um, wisdom that comes from you for sharing with the audience what leadership is, um, what women leadership is, and even just from the context of a believer from the word of God, um, how we should go about leadership, how we should break barriers, how we should co collaborate so that we can be able to bring about the impact you want us to bring on this world, in this world, in the different nations, in the different sectors. Father, we pray that you may be with Esther, that she may share, she may share the wisdom that you have given her um, with ease um, and also precisely even with the time that we have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen, amen. Welcome, welcome. So uh, I know we've you've just been introducing where you know yourself a bit. Where you where what are you doing right now in New York? But I'd like you to just maybe share a bit more about you, about okay. Esther, Esther, maybe for about a minute or so. Um, what are you passionate about? I know you gave me your bio, but I'd rather you share it from you know you yourself. I'd rather okay. you introduce yourself. Yeah, okay. go ahead. I'm happy to do that. Uh, so my name is Esther Moniki. Uh, when I think about myself, I think of myself as a child of the king. And I'm very clear on that. I love the Lord so much as my personal savior. Um, I have very interesting conversations with the father. There's an article that was released recently that I liked and they said that if they were to describe me, it would be using the song of dance with the father. To me, by the way, that was very accurate. I dance with the father. Um, and that says where he sends, I go, where he provides and where he says, me and father are in a relationship is maybe what I'm trying to say. Um, and I also think of him as my king. And because of that, I say I'm a child of a king and I want to live like a child of a king. <laughs> and, and that tells you the kind of conversations we have with the father. Um, so born again, love the Lord. Uh, that defines everything that I am about. I lead an organization, I'm the founder and the uh, chief service officer of an organization called Lapid Leaders Africa. And our mission is to work with the youth. We say that we exist to ignite the progress of the next generation of African leaders and ultimately to enable them to say what we say call reimagine the possible. And our job is to ask who are the next generation of African leaders and how do we equip them with the skills the mindset and networks, the experiences that they need to reimagine the possible. That's sort of the assignment that I'm called to do. Um, we primarily work with university students, fresh graduates in our flagship program, and we sort of take them through structured processes that enable them to understand themselves, understand the marketplace, and ultimately use that to lead Africa. And so we have what we call three pillars, lead self, lead marketplace, and ultimately lead Africa. So that's what I do. I founded that about seven years now, spent eight years now. Um, by training, I'm an accountant. So I was in KU many years ago. I did a degree in accounting. I got a job almost immediately after campus with an audit firm. It's called, it's, I hear they're called one of the big four. So I worked with PwC and worked with them for about eight years. I did two years in UK, um, and in UK, I was an assurance manager who was sort of involved in managing various processes within the audit of financial services sector, and then came back, um, stayed with PwC for two years, and in 2014, I joined a bank, and the antitrust bank is what it's called today. I was the head of risk and compliance there for about two years. But that sort of journey ignited the passion towards working with young people. Because in UK, I kept asking God, what's the difference between this land and the what we call our land, or what we call developing world? And I love hope. Like I'm Kenyan, African, not by birth, but by choice. And I like saying that often. There are people who are African by birth, me and both by birth and by choice. <laughs> and, and by choice. Yeah. yeah. And, and and so yeah. I kept asking God what because every so often I'd come back home and think, this is home. This is where I was created for. This is me. <laughs> and so I would ask God, what's the difference between these two lands? And that sort of got me to the path. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. That's amazing. I mean, that's a hey, that is a serious, serious history there. It you is. Were, and I've summarized it. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know. Umefika mahali hapo 2015, 2015, 
but I believe you've been, um, I, I know we've not shared so much, but a few times you've shared, I think the last time you, you, you kind of gave me a snippet of your story. Um, you know, I think you just, is it that you just finished five years that time? I can't remember the exact year and the exact month, but you were telling me how it was so rough. You decided you're going back to work, you know, and to run this yes. organization. And, and then God just, you know, brought you back. And then, you know, uh, so you have gone through it. You understand what leadership is from different I angles. I you do. I, I, do. I see the romantic side and I don't have the yeah. romantic side. <laughs> You know, people can see you, you know, you're in New York, you're doing it, you got this, and people are like, ah, she's so lucky. You know, those are some of the thoughts people have. She must be so lucky. God you just let the process. Idea. Yeah, they have no idea of the work you have done on the back scene. And I'd like you to just share with us, for you as Esther, mm -hmm. what is leadership? Like, how would you describe um, leadership, especially from a woman's context? how does Esther lead or what would you categorize that this is leadership to me mm -hmm. yeah so a bit of the way not a bit everything I think about is also a bit anchored not a bit really anchored in what God's world says and when I think about yeah. leadership I like what John Maxwell talks about that leadership is ultimately the art of influence and it's God gives you a space that you can influence so it gives you a space and authority to influence a space i think that's what it's the ability to influence the spaces that god has given you um and the spaces i mean in terms of both physical spaces but also in terms of the people that god gives you to work mm. with and so that ability to be able to say i'm called to education I'm called to governance and how do i apply who god has made me to be to influence that space that for me is what leadership is. And it's the reason why I believe all of us are going to be lead. Because I think at our best, we have people, be it your needs, that you must be in. Because it's again in your space who has God given you authority to be able to influence. That for me is the definition that I want with leadership. Yeah, well, I love that. I, I agree. I agree. I also believe that leadership is influence. And mm. everyone, and everyone is a leader. I think most people think leaders are the ones who pioneer things, mm. the ones who start organizing, start, and they're like, those are leaders. No, those are just pioneers. You know, they, they are different categories and different uh, graces or abilities, but all of us are leaders. And I love that. So one question I really have um, that I'd like you to share and openly, and feel free to also share one example. Mm. Um, what are in these two questions. What are some of those key qualities you believe women have that we mm -hmm. can be in the leadership space? Most times women have this idea of, you know, when they come to leadership, they're always having this idea of fighting eh? mm -hmm. and have to start fighting men, have to start fighting people. So you come in with the attitude of trying to, to fight for your space, uh, fight for your voice. You know, we're always, mm -hmm. you know, so it's always like a fighting thing, mm -hmm. but I'd like you yeah, what is it that we carry to understand that we carry so much and mm -hmm. that we carry and that is it's needed <laughs> and how we can go about you know using that that value and those qualities out there. So yes. So that's a long conversation, but just to speak one or two things mm -hmm. to it. I think one it's what you've described is an identity conversation. Um uh, and identity conversations are for women but also for men. And it's a conversation around what's the identity that God given me and owning that in its fullest. And the biggest enemy of identity conversations in current society is society. And so for women, and I'll be very frank, um, though our bigger problem is we are trying to be men. And 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 we are trying to be men because the current environment we live in is if you ask me very heavy on looking at life through the man and so we think that success has to be through what we've seen in the past which is that men succeed men lead men have wealth and so we're almost trying to sit and be the men 
but we miss the yeah. power of who we are. The power of who we are is we are women. And even when we lead our, our best, we lead as women. Um, one of the things that you will constantly hear is women are emotional. And when they lead, they're emotional. I think that's an awesome thing. I think human beings are emotional. I think that a lot of the issues that we face in the world today is because we've yeah. set emotions behind. Humans yes. are humans. And humans mm. are emotional. So when that woman yeah. is emotional, awesome, go you. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, and you need some that intelligence relates. around it, but it's just speaking oh towards, God. yes, go on. Yeah. And that is what makes us amazing leaders. Because yes. women can be able, to, yeah, women can be able to tap into what someone else is feeling. And therefore, even the way we relate to people, we treat people as human beings. We love them and value them even more. You know, in an organization, yeah, you know, just to maybe to give different examples, like a man is very linear and he's, mm. uh, you know, he's just thinking those goals, goals and he may mm. do whatever it takes to, to fulfill those goals and not really care about the other people in the team. Mm. But a woman is able to, to see the big picture, but also see how it is going to affect every other person, even Absolutely. the tea lady, <laughs> even and the that's about man. detail. Women understand yeah. in the detail. Um, and also women are natural healers just by the giftings that God has given. So uh, that's to say, find your identity in the things that God has given you. Let them be enough that you are awake to emotions. And because you're awake to emotions, let me just speak this from a sort of big picture perspective. I think in terms of life goes through errors. And we're in a shift, whether we know it or not. But before we talk about the current shift, let's talk about the shifts that have gone on in the past. And I won't go very far, but you have your agrarian revolution. And then somewhere along the way, you have your industrial revolution. Now, at the agrarian revolution, you had what is called aristocrats who owned a lot of land. And they realized I can make wealth by hiring people, workers. And that formed the industrial age. I mean, there's a lot I can talk about that, but let's just say industrial age. And that's what we've been living by for a long time. And then somewhere along the way, social media happened and it activated what is called the knowledge era. And the knowledge era means that you have access to a lot of information, which brings down barriers that industrial age had, which meant only the aristocrat knew things. Now in the knowledge era, we all have access to information. We are in a shift towards the post-knowledge era. And in the, po the, the advantage of the knowledge era is information is accessible to everybody. The disadvantage of that is information can be incapacitating. And so you can have issues of paralysis, analysis, but also you can have significant emotional gaps. And so the way you're hearing us talking about depression, suicide, I mean, there are many sides to that conversation, but one of them is that in the knowledge era, and so what happens in the knowledge era is people have excess information, but the industrial age did not strengthen our ability to deal with our emotions. It was a logical age. You cannot survive a post-knowledge era based on just logic. Wow. You have to have awareness. And so when we talk about the future is female, the reason the future is female and, and I don't like the idea of separating men and women as against each other. I totally believe that the Lord created both men and women to collaborate. But well, just to speak the strength of the women, the things that women have, the future is female because we are in an emotion. Once you come from a knowledge era, wow. the thing that you must put in place is how do people deal with that knowledge. And if you don't do that, society breaks down. Wow, mm. that is like, yeah, that's like a light bulb moment right there. Um, I don't know, just emphasize even more. <laughs> so you're saying we are getting into, so what, what is the era going to be called? An emotional era? Okay, maybe not emotional It's a post-knowledge era. Um, okay. But you can see it in a physical sense. Think about it when you go. We, I use the example of my grandmother. My late grandmother had, if you ask me, a lot more difficulties than we do today. 
let me use an example and it's a bad example but i'll go with it um he, she was probably being beaten by the wife by the husband and she would have conversations with her friends of oh, today i was beaten by my husband because for that age being beaten by your husband was the miracle it means he loves you go with me with this story and <laughs> but my grandmother would go fetch water with a bucket that's broken go 20 times but that was her life and she was okay with that she did not know better she did not know any different love she did not know any different way to fetch water she did not know any different work now step in esther and her generations people live on social media i know what kim kardashian is doing i don't understand why my life is not like kim kardashian's that's the only <laughs> and i'm not exaggerating this whole thing but i'm just painting up yeah, and yeah. and so knowledge era means i have access to a lot of information and information yeah. is powerful but information is also crippling if you don't have a strong sense of identity Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and right. that's why emotions and understanding emotions is a powerful thing in the hbi and that's why the yeah yeah, yeah. because exactly. we get emotions and that's yeah. also to say we must get our brothers to get emotions they are yeah. humans and they i hear a lot of people fighting with emotions and one of the sessions we have in lap is around emotions no awareness and we have a therapist who runs it who runs it we love and she talks about emotions as signals mm, yeah now what once you reconcile with that as a woman and a leader you start to ask what is this emotion telling me more than running away from the emotion oh i love it taylor that you said very interesting things because as you're saying when you're giving you can give a, you can be in the knowledge era and you have so much coming at you but it doesn't mean everything that's coming at you is beneficial and learning how to really? take what and and what you need to lose because there's also the same thing and i think that's also the enemy's plan as much as you know we are living in the age where a lot of truth is being dispensed you know like we can be mm-hmm. able to go access teachings access you know like even as believers sermons and get you know the same thing the enemy is also using the same space to dispense deception and lies and lies and so what you're saying about uh, it's true about knowing who you really are and knowing what the truth is and then now because we are living now in the age also everyone has their truth i'm living my truth everyone has their truth mm-hmm. and uh kim kardashian because of the same thing that's what's happening to young people right now i don't know if they are watching <laughs> when we say young people we mean teenagers and 20 in the early 20s maybe even uh, 25 and maybe i think it's just to be honest i don't think it's just young people i think even our generation it's just that we haven't named it we have the same issues it's so true there is peer pressure in different levels you look at someone and what they're having the life they're having and you're thinking i also want that why can't i have that and it's just information that you're getting from you know the global you know from the internet and it's not probably true you don't have the entire so it gives you very weird perceptions and i think that's it that's, that's i think this knowledge era who is saying the truth who's giving the truth where is the truth so i like what you said about post knowledge era about emotional intelligence just knowing who you are and being able to have the tools to be self aware to be able to know the knowledge how to use the knowledge for yourself um and also you know what you're saying about emotions in terms of them being signals because they're supposed to be signals to how you've been thinking but there's value i think what you're saying there's been a lot of value especially in the mental health era whereby now people realizing oh oh my you mean i was wounded from this you know from my upbringing this was normal but it was not supposed to be normal oh then mm-hmm. people now now it is so powerful they are very powerful and we are getting into a space where we're having a generation that has healed or rather is really championing healing and they are getting to a, a place of raising other people or another generation that is very healthy that will be really healthy uh, even emotionally and mentally And, and there's a whole conversation we can have around that but um i think one of the bigger things in the post knowledge era and especially from a spiritual perspective 
perspective is that I think one of the bigger things God is doing is healing mankind. And, yeah. and that comes through in all the emotional conversations we're having. I, and I don't want to go into that direction because that could take us a long time, but I think we have a world that needs healing in short. And yeah. that's, that's the space that self-awareness allows us to be able to play in so then we propel the healing because once we heal the possibilities and especially from an african perspective and i don't want to go into that direction because it would go very heavily but yeah i i hear what you're saying mm. yeah, that is powerful i like that um I, I guess we can get into the last um you know question and feel free also to share a personal experience what are some, actually, let me just join this conversation, these questions together <laughs> so that you just finish it up. Um, what are some of the challenges you have faced as a woman leader? And you can just point maybe one specific one and you know just how you overcame that. And you can just finish up on just sharing tips on how you have been able to collaborate with others. That is men and women just to create a transformation. You'll be able to create, especially with young people, uh, one of the things that I believe that God has graced you with is a strategic mind. And indeed, you're a strategic leader. You know, when I saw your bio, I was like, you are. Like for someone to create a system like you created in Lapid, my God. <laughs> Those are strategies, you know, like the way Joseph was given such a mind. That is the mind that God has given you. And so I just want you to share uh, that. Um, yes. Just go ahead and share that and anything. You've made me say many things. Let me just see where I, I enter in that conversation. Let me just pick one place. So the first question you asked was sort of the challenges I've had as a woman leader. I'll be very honest. I never considered myself a woman leader. I considered myself a leader. And I think I'm just waking up to the woman leader now more than I have before. Um, I, I grew up with, my mother is a force. Um, she's currently running for the woman's rep for Kiambu. Uh, my grandmother was a force and my grandmothers both were forces. My sister is a force. Um, and when I say a force, I mean women who are comfortable in their skin and are willing to go into spaces that people haven't gone to. I make fun. Um, for a long time, when you entered my mother's house, my parents' house, you know, met the president's picture and the wife, the vice, the, that was President Kenyatta, the first one, and then you found President Moi and the wife, and then you found President Kibaki and the wife, and President Kenyatta and the wife. Was there? Oh. <laughs> and then you found, my mom is short, and you see a photo of her with somebody, a politician, and then you see my, and, and that's how I've grown up. In many of my growing up, my mom was the short only woman in many spaces. <laughs> And, and, and I think that had a lot more influence in me than I knew. Um, that said, the, uh, the woman leader, for me, the first part was a lot, a lot and I think it's still going on around healing the woman leader in me. The, so my first career was very, it was, I was an, it was an accounting firm, women were less, it was very, had go. And so I am easily a leader who can lead like a man to be very honest. So we did suits, dark colored suits. Um, we did almost like a briefcase equivalence, we call them like equivalence. And, and sort of just starting to see, I don't want to do all that. I want to do that and and that and is the woman who loves god the woman who is empathetic the woman who and i'm so like for me one of the bigger gifts you say the strategic but outside that actually is the bigger gift that has given me is i pick up people are at easily um and and for the longest time i would hold that back because that comes with a lot of emotions and and when I say we live in a world that doesn't have room for emotions I speak about myself as well. and for the longest time I felt like emotions are too much and for me because I'm also wired a very like I'm very sensitive and I pick up emotions a lot I just 
hot e to <laughs> And, and one of the bigger jobs we do in Lapid, and I love it, is making room for people to learn to sit with their emotions. Um, and there are tools you can use to manage emotions, but not to hide emotions. And so for me, the woman leader, and this is still a journey that I am on, is activating that part and allowing me to lead with my heart. One of my favorite authors is Brené Brown. And we, I think last year, part one, we did a lot of Lapid work based on one of our books, just called Dare to Lead. And we talk about brave hearts. All leaders have brave hearts. Um, in the current world, people lead with their minds, but the most bold leaders lead with their minds and with their hearts. And so for me, as a woman leader, that's what I'm constantly speaking to. How do I engage both my strategic mind and my empathetic heart and lead with both? And wow. I use and because I find a lot of us, especially in this age right now, we think with or. And so, and especially for women, we want to box women into empathetic only. But women are empathetic and you go and read about the border. Go and read about Ruth. Go ahead, Ruth. Yeah. Go and think, read about rehab. My favorite at the moment is rehab. Rehab saves, saves a whole generation because she picks up the time and she sees this is a season. This is a shift. And she tells Joshua, save me and my brother and my, and my father and my mother and my family. That's a woman leader. They lead with their heart and yeah. with their mind. And one of the conversations I've been having with people often, and I would throw this and I will not even give an answer, is one of the verses that I love and I feel is important at the moment, maybe I love many verses, is what people make fun of me and say, I should stop saying a verse, I should say the verses. <laughs> but it's the story of Christ telling the disciples, I've sent you a sheep among wolves. You know, I am very, my mind is very, pictorial I, I i see that and i ask god Kai, you're sending sheep think about condo yeah. among wolves sheep among oh. wolves sheep among wolves and one of the mistakes we've done as a church is we shield the sheep and we don't live among wolves oh your calls to live among wolves. We want to be safe in our own corner as sheep. Yes. The father sent you to be sheep among wolves. If you sit in a corner where there are no wolves, that's not the place for the father. And I think that's why there's a lot of disruption happening in the church. You have to get out of that corner. Yeah. The Lord sent you to be sheep among wolves. But he gives you tools. And he says, be as harmless as a dove, it is true. Uh, now that is, and, and that has happened. That, that whole conversation is emotions and strategy. Wow, that, I love it. Yeah, it's that God has called us and given us the capacity to be harmless as doves. And yet it should now people have defaults and you must name your own default and ask God to teach you yeah. the one you have. A lot of African context, we have the harmless as doves. We have to learn the shoot. The world is cheap. Yeah. It is not optional. <laughs> it is the world. It doesn't matter whether we wish it away. It doesn't matter whether we pretend it is not. Sheep among wolves. That is so profound. And, and so activating the harmless as a dove, yet as shrewd as a serpent. Yeah. And those two are for me what leadership, and as a woman leader, I want to be known for and become. Mm -hmm. And for me, my default to be fair is strategic. But I want to activate the hard part as well. But to challenge women to ask, where are you at and which one do you need to go? 
do need both. Um, yeah. And so that's sort of my journey as a woman leader. I could speak to many things, but to be honest, at the heart of it is that. Um, and then the, you said about collaborating and collaborating is as good as <laughs> Um, let me know it because I don't even have enough time to be able to go into too many details about that. But just to say, as as and maybe this is just advice to my younger self, to young women, to imagine women leaders, to anybody God has called to be a leader, that you you have to ask God for the mind to be strategic. And you mentioned that in Lapid, they're very strategic. And I, I bless God for that. And I think for me, it's the journey that God took me through. Um, I worked in big four, I worked in banks. And so my mind is naturally strategic. And I bring that in the place God has called me to do work. I suspect when Jubu, there's some things God has taken you through that make you by default good at certain things. It's important as part of self-awareness to know that and make sure they shine in your work, but also ask God for the things you don't have so that then you are both harmless and shrewd. So for me, the and this was very divine. I did not write this, to be very honest. And that's why I'm very clear that, I mean, an assignment that's God's, and my job is to align with what he's writing. And my first job was strategic, but somewhere along the way, I threw myself into church and I was in Mavuno. And Mavuno is, and I learned a lot there as well. Um, and I think it started the harmless journey for me. Um, but the point I'm trying to make is know your defaults and don't get stuck in your default use your leverage, leverage on your default because your default is your biggest asset. But also ask God for the extra. And that is in the collaboration part. And you're able to say, I'm good at, I will work with who is even better with this. So I mentioned one of the classes, a lot of the classes will run within Lapid also, even on emotional, and, and I think it's an assignment for the season that we are in. I was in a meeting recently with our general manager and he was telling me, Esther, in this conversation, do you know how many times you've talked about healing? At least 15 in like five minutes. <laughs> and it's because I honestly believe that that's the season that we are in. We are in a shift. If, yeah. if you shift without healing, you bring to this other side Solomon's problems. Mm -hmm. Um. Wow. And, 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 and the era that you are in is, an, and that's why, for example, there's a lot of conversation for young because we are raising Solomons. And even ask in some ways, we have Solomons. Mm -hmm. uh, Solomon does great things and he asks God for wisdom and God gives him wisdom because God gives what people ask for. But Solomon makes mistakes that are David's mm -hmm. because if your father hasn't healed, they perpetuate the same things that, that then should kill the process. I think for me, the saddest part, the thing is that Solomon boots the, the job. Solomon was greater and yet lesser. <laughs> it's, it's quite sad. And then we even yes. remember David that Solomon, I mean, Solomon comes up, but I think for us, David is more, you know, he, he's more effective. And it's because of that, that brokenness of heart and how he still went to the Lord and he was still after the Lord's heart. I love what you're sharing. I love what you've shared. Um, I think some of the things that you, you're just bringing out that are standing out, it reminds me of this scripture. I don't know if it is in um, First Samuel or First Kings or it's in Psalms. I think it's in Psalms that says that how David led with, integrity of heart and with skillful hands. And even as you were saying about now having both of the shrewd and the harmless, I think that really works together. The other thing is, you know, as women, 
we we actually are going to be best our best when we do both like that's how we are wired we are like spaghetti even our brains everything is attached to an emotion we cannot try and you know put compartments and boxes that's how god just wired us and that's why we collaborate easily because you sit with people and you pick a story and you think ah the thing i want to mention man you can i know we need to start to wrap up very soon but let me just mention women have to be careful because god elevates us because i honestly believe god will elevate very many women but we have to be careful that we don't do the same mistakes that have been done in the past we must lead with our heart and our head and with our brothers these these are not competition times and a woman must know how to humble as well and i know and i want to say this especially because of the kingdom of god uh, people here we have to be careful that we do not build a system that leaves our brothers behind we are mothers we are sisters we are called for society not for women and we have to be careful with our conversation yeah. because we can make this wow yeah that is thank you for sharing that we are called for society <laughs> I love that. Not for women per se. So we need to carry our brothers along. And remember, it's complementary leadership. It's not competitive. Uh, thank you so much for coming on board and sharing. Uh, I know I'm not able to access the comments, but I'm sure there are so many comments going on and probably some questions that will come in. Maybe later on when you have time, I know you can go and look at the, the maybe some of the questions later. I hope we're going to have you some other time when we have more time and just to share so much. You have so much wisdom. I'm going to go and meditate. And then, you know, even what you're sharing right now has also affirmed so much, like even in Wired, we are doing so many healing workshops. We have, we created a wellness program. And I remember I was asking God, why are you taking me this direction? Okay, I'm telling you, you've answered my question in more ways than one, <laughs> in so many ways. And I thank God for that. I'd like to pray with you. Um, I don't know if you have any parting shots before I pray. Do I have any parting shots? I... I will just share that what sort of the verse that God has deposited in my heart right now. Um, and it may be yours, but it may also just be for somebody who's listening, or it may just be just some seasonal word. But one of the words that God has been speaking heavily to me about is we have not been this way before. And the, when Joshua enters the promised land, one of the first words God tells him is, of course, be strong and courageous. In fact, um, that's a powerful a whole conversation that needs to happen. But before he tells him that, he tells him, you have not been this way before. And it's, it's anchored on the verse of, you cannot put new wine on old wine skin. And, and just to speak to myself, to speak to Anjugu, to speak to the church and all of us who are logged in, and to say, we must go to the Father and say, I've not been this way before. Teach me how to let go of the old. Because the place that we are in will need us to think differently, engage differently, and especially the African community. And we've waked up into the things that God is doing and really truly allow ourselves to get rid of the old and allow ourselves to walk with God in the new. The possibilities will be great. And, and also just to wrap with, do a dance with God. Um, and, and, and the many possibilities that you will get and 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 some will activate something and they are important but ultimately the big the big part is the dance with the father because he 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 knows and he has written and and more than anything we must recognize that he has a story that he intends to to bring and he invites us to do a dance with him and then you'll be your lingai yo <laughs> i think that's sort of where i would end that conversation i want to but thank you very much for having me and for the work that you're doing in wired and sort of the commitment that you have to it i pray that god continues to um keep your hand amen thank you thank you for that thank you for that wisdom you've shared um I, I mean, I'm just blown away. I'm also so, you know, empowered as well by this conversation. 
Uh, and for all of us, uh, you can go and follow Lapid Leaders. They're doing amazing work with young people. If you have a son or a daughter, or if you know young people, send them there. They will be seriously equipped for the marketplace. It's an amazing, amazing program. For the marketplace and for life. <laughs> they will be equipped for both. And you know, this is a, an organization that is founded on God's word. So even as they teach your children, as they teach the young people, you can be sure that it's grounded on God's word. Yeah. It's not some weird things that they're being taught. So we bless the Lord. Let me just pray for you then as you take time to go. Father, we thank you, Lord, for Esther. We thank you for the work that you have done in her and through her. And even just the fruit that has come out because of her obedience to you. And even as she has declared that she's in, she's dancing with the father and dancing with you, I know has required a surrender, has required submission, has, has required so much uh, from her, but Lord, she has chosen to. And out of that, we have seen an amazing synchrony of you using her for greater work and greater purposes. Lord, we thank you, Lord, even in this season she's in, may you use her, Lord, um, even as a Joseph, that you will give her wisdom that comes from above so that she can bring forth the blueprint that you've given her here on earth in Africa for transformation of Africa and the entire world. Lord, we bless her for the gift that she is. We pray for her and cover her in the name of Jesus, that indeed she's under the shadow of the Almighty, that every need she has shall be met above and beyond. Father, we pray for grace to abound in her life we pray for all the needs and even her desires, Lord, will be met because she's just where you want her to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Thank you Anjoko. Welcome. Asante Sana. Hopefully we'll have you back one of these days. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right, guys. Thank you so much for coming in. I don't know what time you came in. Um, I'm sure you, there are so many comments that you guys have put in there. Um, I want you to share this life with as many people as you can. There has been so much wisdom in that short time. I am going to continue to meditate what uh, Esther has shared. And God has just used her to share wonderful things. Some of the takeouts that have come forth for me uh, is that she said that leadership is influence. And just influencing your space, that is physical space and the people that God has brought in your life. And so ask yourself, who has God brought me in my life? How can I begin to impact them positively? Where am I at? Is it a job? Uh, is it a chama? Wherever you are at, even in church, how can I you know, start influencing that space, even if it's bringing forth wisdom or systems, whatever it is? Because all of us are called to lead, okay? All of us are called to lead. The other things that she shared, which are profound about that, that we have been going through different eras and we're just coming out of the knowledge era. We Rather, we are in the knowledge era and we're going to come into another era, which is a post-knowledge era. And there is a danger where we are going to be filled with so much wisdom and leave the heart out of it you know uh, we might be in danger of not healing from the past and from the you know our forefathers or you know our parents and then we'll be able to just like a story of David and Solomon and so God is really healing and we can see so much I've been able to see this even in why I've been focusing so much on it in the last well, almost two years and indeed, it is God who's saying, I'm healing my people. I need to heal my people. And so one of the things that is critical, as much as we are gaining knowledge, it's critical for you to be very self-aware, to know who your identity is as a woman, as a, as a child of God, and to be able to have high uh, EQ, emotional intelligence, to know how to manage emotions, to heal, first of all, from past wounds, and to be able to have wisdom and intelligence to manage those emotions. The other thing that was so profound <laughs> was about how to lead, not just with your head, but with your heart, both and, both and, and that is excellent, just like the, the way God has told us, and she mentioned how as believers, we're not supposed to be stuck in church there, hugging each other, but we're supposed to be going out, God has, you know, sent us among wolves, but he's told us to be harmless as doves and shrewd as serpents. And so that is how we need to be. We need to carry the gentleness of doves and also the shrewdness of the wisdom um, uh, to do that. So having, leading with both heart and head. And so let us embrace that. Let us embrace that. Thank you for joining us. I'm sure that the Lord blessed you. Please share this 
and live with as many people as you can. Let them be blessed as well. If you have any questions uh, towards Esther or me, please put them in the chat section and I will tag her and she will be able to, to answer them later. She had to step out a bit earlier before eight so that she can get into another meeting. But we've been so blessed and we intend to do these lives uh, frequently. And so if you have any questions or have an idea of what you'd want us to share, please put it in the chat section as well. And we'll be tackling these questions and these topics because we are all about equipping women leaders. We're all about raising an army of women influencers who are working in their purpose and who are grounded in their identity in Christ. These are the women influencers we are equipping in the word of God and sending and deploying in the nations. And so this is our, this is the space. We, this is one of the areas Wired Global um, also does a lot of training, mentorship, and coaching. We have a program called She is Wired. Um, Wired is an acronym uh, known as, or rather, dubbed uh, as Women Influencing Radically to Establish Destiny. It is a three-month course. We meet every Saturday morning, and then there's a community project after. We are starting the next troop, that is troop nine, in April, the second week of April. And so if you're interested in this course, if you want to know who a woman is, you know, want to uh, identify with biblical womanhood on how to lead as a woman, as an authentic woman, how to, you know, deal with your finances, how to uh, work on your, you know, how to heal, how to manage people, how to manage all kinds of resources, how to clarify your purpose and to create a plan and a lifestyle that will enable you to step out and live out in that purpose to create impact. This is the course. This is the course. So if you're interested, kindly reach us. You can find our numbers in our, you know, in our website that is wiredglobal.org. Or you can also just inbox us and we'll be glad to help. Thank you for staying with me and thank you for joining us today. Have a blessed night and the Lord bless you. Bye-bye.